My name is Taz, and I belong to the Hazara community group from Afghanistan. I came to Australia in 2013 as an unaccompanied minor to seek asylum because my life was in danger. That year, Australia changed its immigration policy for people arriving by boat, ensuring we never get permanent protection, nor will we ever be able to bring our family here. Almost nine years has gone, and I'm still living in limbo. My future is uncertain, but one thing I do know is that I will never be able to return under Taliban rule. So where does that leave me and my family back in Afghanistan? I am 25 years old, and I already have lost contact with my three sisters. Aziza, Habiba, and Najiba are human beings. They are smart, beautiful, and kind. How can this government who knows the mind and terror the Taliban bring, just sit and watch as we experience yet another genocide of innocent people. Yeah. Well, yeah. Diana, let me come to you first on this. Taz, we heard there, he's on a temporary protection visa. He's been on it for nearly nine years. The Prime Minister has made it clear there will be no permanent visas for those who did come by boat. Uh, we have received a lot of questions about this from members of the Afghan community. What is it like, as far as you're aware, uh, being on a temporary visa? What, what does that mean? Yeah, and I just would like to say thank you, Taz, for your question. I see you and I can not even imagine what that is like to be on a temporary protection visa in Australia, um, living your life in limbo like that. There are over 5,100 um, Afghans currently here in Australia living amongst us, working, shopkeepers, doctors, lawyers, working amongst us in our neighbourhoods who are on temporary protection visa. And that is also one of our calls in our open letter, in our petition. We are also calling for those 5,100 um, people who mainly from the Hazara minority group who don't have um, a pathway to permanent residency. Now, it is so important that they be granted that because it is clear from everything that has happened um, in the last week um, that the Taliban resurgence, um, they cannot be um, given much deference right now um, around this rhetoric that they are spinning um, and they should be granted permanent protection. Well, uh, Darren Chester, is it time <coughs> to give someone like Taz a permanent visa? Well, David, you know and, and I know how incredibly complex this issue has proved to be. And you're in the press gallery and I was in the backbench in opposition when question time was a daily report on the number of boats arriving unlawfully in our country. And what the Prime Minister has said and made it very clear, we won't be outsourcing our refugee, our humanitarian, our visa program to people smugglers. We won't give them a product to sell. But do TPVs that do that? This question, I mean, there's, there's boat invented. turnbacks and so on and offshore processing. But do TPVs do that? What we, know, what we know, David, from the last experience when we lost control of our borders under the previous government was that people smugglers are waiting for every small chink in our armour and to be able to go to the unfortunate souls who are seeking to travel and to sell them a product that they can come to Australia and they'll get permanent residency. And we saw people dying at sea and there is nothing humane about sending our Navy, our border protection people out to fish bodies from the water as they had to do when we lost control of our borders. We can't just, see that return. I would so, like to correct that. I'm that's... sorry, the Prime Minister made it very clear the Prime Minister made it very clear today that people who arrived unlawfully will not be in a position to achieve permanent residency under this government. They have actually been determined as genuine, genuine refugees. They've already gone through the process and they, there is no pathway to them to permanent residency. Now, where is, the, where is the human rights in that? Where is the humanity in that, that these people have to live their lives in limbo, which means that they can't have family reunification, which means that Taz can't have his sisters, his parents, his, sib his siblings come out to Australia? Where is the <coughs> dignity in that? I ask of you, I ask of everyone in Australia right now, how you could fathom living your life like that. Bob Carr, let me just get your thought on that. Yeah, yeah, David, I, I, look, I, I'm, I'm the first to concede that people smugglers should not be setting the pace in Australian immigration. It's a position I'd taken when I was in federal politics and I supported Kevin Rudd's initiative with offshore processing and offshore detention and boat turnbacks has worked, full marks to the Abbott government. With those policies in place, however, there's no reason to worry about an inadvertent message to people smugglers by doing, doing something that captures the generosity with which Bob Hawke moved in 1989 in the wake of Tiananmen. 
letting them stay. It, yeah. seemed, it seemed almost flamboyantly generous at the time. Many of these students could have returned safely to China. But he didn't take the risk. He erred on the side of generosity. Yeah. I am convinced from what I've seen of the Afghan community in Australia, Hazaras stand out. Uh, I've met a lot of them. That there is not the faintest risk of the nefarious trade in, in, in human beings being resumed because after all these years, we legitimise the, the people who've got TBV status. Err on the side of generosity. These people have been fantastically successful additions to this country's multicultural strength. Legitimise it, while at the same time allowing the offshore processing and detention policy and the boat turnbacks to take care of the problem, a real problem. I, I don't retreat from that mm, okay. as people smuggling. It will not revive because of reform of... Right. T because of the legitimisation um, of people with TPVs. I just want to say yeah. that, David, that I think it's, like, we have to sit here and constantly prove our humanity to be given our basic human rights. And we have signed on to the United Nations Refugees Convention. We have obligations at international law. And you can't forget that the Afghan diaspora that is in Australia right now, we have over 46,000 of us, 71,000 including our ch the children of Afghans. This is a, v a core constituency base. And our history in this nation dates back to the Afghan Kamaliyas that have come back in the 1800s. Mm. So we have been pivotal in nation building here, but we shouldn't have to prove our humanity. This is an international law obligation.